So thanks to Zach Duval, um, he installed a new app that we're using right now. That's why I'm using my, my, my iPad Touch. Uh, I'm not checking on Facebook or YouTube uh, for messages. I'm using this uh, device to control um, the, our screen here for my PowerPoint presentation. So uh, a, few weeks, uh, a few months ago, during the height of the pandemic lockdown, uh, me and my brother Priest here, we watched the TV series The Chosen. How many of you have seen The Chosen? You've seen it? You've seen it? Yeah. It's a wonderful um, uh, TV series. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, movies about Jesus. This one is different. They made it so real. You know, there's, they added sense of humor there. And uh, they also added some stories that were, are not like in scriptures, you know, just to fill up the gap so that you will understand uh, what's the background uh, of that event in Scripture. And it's so beautiful. So I, I really encourage you to, uh, to watch that uh, TV series, The Chosen. And, you know, The, the, the Chosen, this uh, TV series, as of yesterday, has been watched by 51 million people, okay? All of, in, in 180 countries. And this TV show, TV series, is being translated right now to 70 languages. Imagine... Like the explosion of this, like more and more people will be able to watch this TV series. And this is a very good evangelization tool, you know, uh, for people to encounter Jesus in a very personal way. Okay, so I'm really very excited about this. And, and in that TV series, uh, uh, one of the favorite scenes there was when, when Jesus called Peter. Okay, and, and I was like thinking, you know, if, if Jesus would, would, would choose his followers, he would, he would choose the educated, the strong, the talented, the gifted. And yet he chose Peter and the other disciples. You know, Peter, as you know, is un uneducated, poor, fisherman as a profession have, uh, and profession. And yet Jesus called him. And in that TV series, you would see uh, his weaknesses. You know, he's very impulsive. You know, he, he has this temper. You know, if he's upset, he will really show it. Uh, and, uh, and yet, Jesus called him. Okay, and, and you see here, that, that's the scene in, in the, uh, 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 the TV series, The Chosen. And, uh, we, and we see here in, in our gospel today, in our gospel today, we see here the faith of Jesus. When Jesus asks, who do people say that I am? You know, they, they, they say, oh, you, you are... People say that you're John the Baptist, or you're Elijah, or you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, right? And then Jesus asked the disciples, now, who do you say that I am? You know, you've been with me for uh, quite some time now, okay? Now, who do you say that I am? Now, you know, there was silence there. You know, uh, I think the disciples didn't know what, what to answer. And then Peter stood up and said, what did Jesus, what, what did uh, uh, G Peter said, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, his profession of faith. And because of that, you know, Jesus said, you know, S Simon, son of, uh, 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 this, this was not revealed to you uh, by yourself, but by your heavenly father. And because of that, you know, Jesus said, you are Peter. Okay, Peter um, the, the Greek word for that is petros, which means a fragment, a stone, a pebble, a small one, okay? He said, you are Peter, petros, and on this rock, rock, um, the, the Greek word for that is petra. So, you know, there's the similarity between petros and petra. You know what petra means? Petra means a boulder, an immovable mass, from a pebble to a mass, Okay, and that's what Jesus is saying. You are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. You know, that's why in that picture you see here Jesus giving him the key, you know, being the authoritative figure, the first pope of the Catholic Church. Okay, and he says there, whatever you bind on earth will be bind in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, and, and we see here, you know, I was like thinking, I was like, if I were in the shoes of Jesus, he's the CEO of this big company, the Catholic Church. And of course, he needs a, a, like a COO, a central, uh, a chief operating officer, okay? 
And of course, you know, if I don't know about you, you know, if 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 you've been in a job interview, of course, if you are interviewing an applicant for a job, you would look for their credentials. You know, they should be ace in their education, uh, uh, in in their grades, in their in their school. You know, they should be good in in um, personal relations. Uh, they should be good in almost everything, so that they would be able to fit into the job. And yet, we know the weaknesses of Peter. Peter even denied Jesus three times. Okay? And yet, Jesus chose him despite his weaknesses. Okay? And, uh, you know, we, we've been in, in this world, uh, you know, we've been living, and we've been programmed, you know, to maybe be ashamed of our weaknesses, you know, and boast of our strengths. You know, we, uh, in, 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 in our society today, there's this common notion of survival of the strongest, right? Whether that's in school, whether you're studying, you need to excel. Okay? You need to be good in school, good grades. You, you need to have honors, okay? Because if you don't have, then you won't be able to go to a good university, okay? Uh, so you see here, the, and also like in, in, after you graduate, you go in a corporate world, you need to be good also there. Okay, because if not, you will not be able to climb the ladder of success in your career. That also could be said in sports. You know, a lot of people are into sports and need to excel so that hopefully they'll be able to go to a professional league and then they will be paid big bucks. Okay, or maybe in the, in, in the field of entertainment, you know, actors, actresses, singers, you know, they need to excel. Okay, and, and when they excel, you know, they, 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 it, it's, it's success for them, okay? So we've been programmed that way. That's why for me, uh, when, when, when I discern the, 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 the vocation to the priesthood, I also have that mentality. Okay, I need to be good in preaching. I need to be good in personal relations. I need to be good at this and that, okay? And I saw this video that I would like you to watch. You know, uh, this is a video of uh, a bishop in an ordination homily. Okay, I'd like you to, to, to listen, to watch and listen to this video. Dear brothers, Saul, Nico, Walter, and Evan Dolph, when we were deliberating about your ordination to the priesthood, so many questions were thrown at the table. How are they as students? How are their grades? Are they good with human relations? Are they good in public speaking? Are they on time for the prayers? Can they relate with the other seminarians well? And then it dawned on me, all our questions were about your strengths. I think we need to ask the question, what are your weaknesses? And are you weak enough to become priests? You need to be weak in order to be priests. Because sometimes our own strengths become obstacles for the grace of God to be shown in our lives. Are you weak enough so that the power of Christ can truly shine through you? Now, after watch, vid watch this, this video, the very, qu the very question that this bishop asked the ordinandi is this, how weak are you to become a priest? And, and for me, like for me, I'm, 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 uh, it's kind of like I'm, I'm embarrassed of my weakness. I'm discouraged about my weakness. You know, I'm, I'm envious of the gifts of and talents of my brother priests, you know, especially those who are good in preaching um, and also those who are good in, in being a pastor in, 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 in a parish. I'm, I'm getting envious of, of them. And, uh, you know, watching this video, it made me more comfortable with my weakness, right? And, uh, uh, you know, he said that, you know, sometimes our strength could be an obstacle you know, for, for, for God to be able to use us in a very powerful way because we rely on our own strength instead of relying in God, 
right? That's why for me, I, you know, this year, I think I started to be more comfortable with my weakness. That's why in, in my homilies or when, whenever I would give talks, I would just share my weakness, okay? And, 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 uh, and it's good, you know, uh, Craig Crochelle, um, sorry, he's a, a famous evangelical pastor in, in the United States. He once said this, that we may, we may impress people with our strength, but we connect with our weakness, which is very true, right? We could impress people with our strength, but we connect more with people whenever we share with our weakness. And that's what I've learned, you know, just to share with weakness and don't be embarrassed about it, don't be discouraged, and people could connect with you more. That's why for me, you know, I've shared about my struggles with, with anxiety, with depression, insomnia, and I've even, you know, a period of my time, uh, of my life wherein I had suicidal thoughts. And at first, I was like so afraid, if I share this, what will people think about me? You know, would they look down upon me because of my weakness? And, and so far, like, I was so uh, surprised by, by the response of the people, you know, by how they were able to relate, how they were able to connect, you know, how I'm able to give hope to people. You know, and it's a very powerful thing, you know, and, and that's why the question that I would like to ask you also, you know, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you know, you might think that your weakness is an obstacle for God to use you in a very powerful way. But in reality, it is not. It is an avenue, it's an opportunity for you to humble yourself and have confidence in God, in His mercy, in, in, His, in His grace, in His power, okay? And the more that we humble ourselves and rely to Him, the more that He'll be able to use us in a very powerful way, okay? So, you know, as I've said, don't, don't be embarrassed, don't be discouraged, don't, don't, uh, don't be ashamed of your weakness. And one of the key passages that I would, I would always read is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. My favorite, one of my favorite verse. I hope you'll be able to remember this, try to write it down in a, in a notepad, stick it on a sticky note, and post it everywhere. It says there, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. 